Welcome to step two, sculpting and details. So our armature is done, dry, and ready for clay. The first thing we're going to do is apply clay in all these areas in between the fingers that we glued on earlier. Basically, we're just laying out and bulking up the uh, hand itself. So we're going to work our way around the back side of the hand here and get this all filled in and bulked out. Once we've got that completed, then we'll move on to uh, working on the fingers. So when I apply clay to the fingers, what works easiest for me is I'll start with a ball and I put it in the knuckle position and then smooth a little clay out and then I'll move up to the next knuckle position, get another ball, put the ball in place there on that knuckle position, smooth it down and then I will grab a smaller piece of clay to fill in in between the two balls or the two knuckle sections on the finger and work my way from basically the base of the hand up to the tip of the finger. Remember while you do this you want to work all the way around the finger. You want to work in on the bottom side of the finger as well as the top side. So basically once you start in at that bottom knuckle and work your way to the tip of the finger your entire finger is clayed from the top from the top side all the way down and all the way around. <clears throat> At this point we're not going to put any detail work into the fingers. All we're doing is getting the basic structure and shape um, of the finger in place. So you're just going to do this step one finger at a time, one knuckle at a time until you've gotten through all your fingers, all four fingers all the way down to your thumb. Also a little tip to let you know, because I don't believe I uh, told you before, explained to you before. Uh, while I'm doing this, I have a bowl of water. It's on the table as well. And when I'm going to smooth out um, or blend any sections of clay together, I'll generally get my fingertips wet and then rub through the clay and smooth on the clay. Um, the wet fingers really help keep your hands from sticking to the clay, and it helps to spread the clay and, and smooth the two pieces together. So you'll want to keep a, uh, a little bowl of water with you while you're doing this. It really makes the job a lot easier. You can use paper mache paste, but I, when I've done that, uh, I tend to, to find out that my hands become sticky and it becomes a little more problematic. So water seems to work better. However, the thing to keep in mind is the more water you add, the softer your clay gets, and it can get a little hard to work with. It wants to droop. Also, the more water that you apply into it, I've noticed that it seems to shrink more as the clay dries. And that's one thing to keep in mind. Anytime you're working with paper mache clay and you're doing any kind of sculpture with it, paper mache tends, paper mache clay really tends to shrink quite a bit. So when you're making any features, uh, be it a hand or whatever you're working on, you want to exaggerate those features because by the time the clay cures out, dries and completely cures, it will shrink up quite a bit. And if you didn't exaggerate your features, you'll find that you've lost some of those features that you fell in love with while you were sculpting it. And then a lot of times you may have to go back and add some more clay to bulk back up to get back the feature that you saw before while you were sculpting, sculpting it out originally. Now once we get done here with the uh, thumb, we'll turn around and go ahead and sculpt in some detail on all these knuckles as well. I'll add a little hash marks to, to it here and there to get some more texture to the, the skin of the hand. 
The thumb's done the same way as the fingers. You start off at the base, nice ball, get it smoothed out, get another ball, put it on the next knuckle, <clears throat> work that clay around, bring it all together and smooth it on top and bottom. It's no different than the other four fingers. Alright, seems like that's looking pretty good. We've got a decent looking hand shaping up for us here. And always reference your own hand. It's, that's the easiest thing you can do. Open up your hand, take a look at it, look at the shape, look at what you're sculpting and fill in every, anything that looks wrong or abnormal. Now what I've done here, the clay kind of dried up a little bit. Uh, in between this so I just went ahead and put a little water on all the knuckles to soften them up a little bit and this just a little flat bladed paint tool really is what this is basically all I do for the knuckles as you can see here is I'll score in one small line and then I'll score in two lines on top on and on the bottom side of that in kind of a half moon shape you know if you look at your own hands and look at your own knuckles a lot of times you'll see three lines in those knuckles and those hands when you straighten them out. That's where I got the idea for those creases. And I've just been using it ever since the first time I did it. And it really works out nice. It creates a, a good little detail there that you can really tell that it's a, it's a knuckle. Like you can see here up close, um, it, it adds quite a bit to it. It kind of really brings your hand to life. So just as we've done here, <clears throat> you're just going to repeat this process on all the other fingers and the thumb. Once we get the knuckles detailed out, um, we won't really do any more detail to the fingers themselves. They'll pretty much be done and they'll look good. Uh, so some things you can do, uh, and I do it later on, I believe you'll see, um, down on the, the knuckles, around towards the base of the hand, I'll take and basically uh, make little X marks you know I don't intentionally just make an X right off I'll score lightly score through one direction and I'll come back and score through in another direction and it makes a nice uh, a nice texture to the hand it really kind of brings out that that skin texture that uh, we all have and it makes a great effect So I got the fingers all done. Uh, now, basically, I wanted my hands to look a little bony, a little sunken in, so I'm just taking some extra clay that I got and applying it right to the base of the knuckle and bringing this ridge down further into the hand. It makes it look like a an older hand of someone who's malnourished where you can see the bone kind of protruding through. To me, it's a great effect. Now, the next thing we're going to do is work on the palm. Again, as you can see, always reference your hands. It's the best reference you have. So, took a big ball of clay, starting down at the base of the thumb, and creating that first meaty pouch on the bottom side of your hand, right there next to the thumb. Also, if you look at your if you look at your hand, <clears throat> the base of the thumb's pretty meaty. Right underneath, where all your fingers connect, as well on the palm of your hand. That's pretty thick as well too, so I always try to build that up a little bit more than the center of your hand. Also down past your pinky here where I'm working on, that's pretty meaty too. So basically the palm of your hand when you're looking at it, it's almost got a little bit of a, oh, a bowl shape to it. So in my head when I'm putting my hands together, I really try to keep this bowl type of shape in the palm of the hand. So I'll work the the base of the palm out and around come around the top and back around and keep everything thicker on all those areas and then apply it thinner towards the center because it, it, it keeps that bowl shape and as you do this 
don't forget to go back in you're going to want to work that clay in between each finger to get rid of the little line there just be careful <clears throat> i use my pinky to go in there and smooth that out and get rid of that line so you don't see it so it looks like one smooth piece it generally what turns out pretty good now as well the palm of your hand you've always got uh, the different lines in them like i said i always refer back to my hand i'll squeeze my hand down kind of in the shape that what i've got there look at the lines and just trace some little score marks into it to create some uh, visual effect on the palm of the hand now we've got our hand all done the last thing we need to do is apply clay and sculpt out the uh, the wrist and the arm it's just as easy as the top side you're just going to take clay at the beginning <clears throat> bulk out that wrist have a look you want that to flow and look natural again look at your own hands your own wrists and uh, step back and apply clay until it gets this natural flow from the hand down to the arm it's very very simple I can't stress enough really how truly simple this process is I used to hate making hands they it was always a fight for me I don't know what it was about it but sculpting hands were always just I dreaded them but to have a very cool prop if you've got sculpted hands for it it really adds to your prop as well don't forget on the wrist if you look at it you'll have a little knot I believe it's a piece of bone there that sticks out, and I always put that in on each of my wrists as well. Just everything to make this thing look like it truly is a, a hand and a wrist. As well, on the bottom side of your hand, if you'll turn it over and look, you can usually see a piece of cartilage that runs through there. I try to make that cartilage piece in all my sculpts as well, and simply do that. All I'll do is just press with my thumb and finger into that wet clay I, I put that clay in a little bit thick which allows me to push in and create a divot that you'll see here in a minute I'll create a divot and uh, kind of bring these little pieces of cartilage to life right there that you can see on the wrist just a little more detail adds into the hand a lot of times uh, they're not going to see it in your hunt but for me I like to make everything as about as realistic as I can so you'll just finish off, once you've got those little pieces of detail done, you're just going to finish off claying this all the way down to what was the bottom of the bottle, smooth it all out, and your sculpture is done. You'll just set this aside and let it dry. It'll generally take 24 hours. It'll take 24 hours to 48 hours for this hand to completely dry and cure, just depending on how thick you laid the clay and how wet the clay was. But once this dries out, you're... Uh, you'll be ready for paint and uh, go stick it on your prop. <clears throat> okay, so our hands are sculpted and dried and done. Um, there's not going to be a lot left to finish these things up and basically it's going to be paint and I'm just going to paint these I'll show you here in a little bit I'm going to do a uh, just a black paint and a dry brush over the top of it right now because I don't have a head for these hands yet so I'm not sure what color I need for flesh tone whether it's going to be a clown type of a thing where the hands will be more white or whether it's going to be more of a zombie or whatever it is so at this point in time for this tutorial I'm not going to do the full finished paint but what I am going to do is do the first base of the black paint and then the dry brush and we'll show you that and then from that point on you know the basics of this is just getting these hand sculpted showing you how to use them and what you can do with them but I do want to point out um, let's see I don't know there is a split right here where as it dried it broke open 
and I've got another small one on the wrist right here and right here. So before I paint these, what I'm gonna do, which is nice about mache clay and anything else, is I'm gonna take a little bit of clay. I'm gonna get a little wet, and I'm just gonna patch these up, and then I'm going to set it to dry. That way, uh, once you get the, the clay in here and patch the, the crack up, and then paint that what will what really helps out what this sorry guys what this really helps out with is keeping any kind of water intrusion from getting into your project if you plan on putting it out in the yard so seal the hole up that easy it's that quick let this dry out and it won't take much time for this to dry because it's a very small area. The dry mache right now is going to go ahead and pull some of the water from this clay that I'm applying to it right now. And within a few hours this will be dry. I'll be safe and let it set overnight. Let it dry fully, and then I'll paint it. But I just wanted to point that out to you real quick. If you do see a split, if you've gotten a little heavy, I go heavy a lot with my clay when I'm building things up. If it splits out, just like this, it's not a big deal. A little bit more clay in the crack when you're when it's dry, and you're done. Repair is that simple. So these sculpts are done. And they're ready for they're ready for paint. Uh, also, at this point in time, all the paper that we stuff inside here, we can pull out. Maybe. Reach down in here. Get this newspaper out of here. So what's nice about this now we've got a I'll come through and trim this up with an X-Acto knife, get this mess off of here. But we got a hollow plastic inside. If water gets in here, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's all plastic, it's all sealed up. But the nice thing about this being hollow, if you're gonna put this on a PVC structure, uh, what you can do if you have, this is half inch conduit. If you have um, one inch PVC, on your structure you this will slide right inside the one inch PVC until it stops then you can just drill a hole through your PVC and through this and set a cotter pin in it hold it into place if you need it to be removed you can pull the cotter pin out and pull your hand out it's, it's nice and simple that way if you have uh, if you have a break per se, something happens, maybe this thing falls over, gets knocked over by someone and breaks a finger off, you can just come through to your prop, pull this piece out, now you got your workable hand just like this again. You can bring it back to your table, repair anything you need to repair on it, repaint, do what you need to do, slide it back on your prop and you're good to go. So, fun little hands, are very, very cheap, and uh, Nothing kills a, a prop worse than a, a poor hand. Just a glove or something like that doesn't cut it. So these are realistic hands, made very cheap. Doesn't take too long. You can knock out a set of hands uh, like this really within a week, uh, maybe two if you're just working on the weekends or in the evenings. But that's all there is to it. Great looking hands. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys over at step three.